If you haven't watched the English dub history episode of k -On Part 1, please do so. We last left off with Kaon's first season being released in full first in Southeast Asia in 2010, and then other English-speaking territories in 2011. Today, we're going to look at Kaon's follow-up season. But first, one correction. I said in the last part that changing Hokago tea time to after school tea time would bite the American dub in the ass. I forgot the moment in question is in the Hong Kong dub too, and the American dub found a way around it, but we'll get to all that later. On with the episode. k -On, with two exclamation points, came out in Japan in 2010, featuring all new adventures with Hokago Tea Time. While Season 1 focused on introducing the anime's major elements, Season 2 leads into the cute girls doing cute things aspect of k -On. Episodes range from running a marathon, to performing Romeo and Juliet, to just the girls hanging out. However, that seemingly saturated surface is subdued by a tinge of melancholy. Almost every episode gives the original four members a reminder. These fun high school days aren't going to last forever. They need to think about their careers. They need to study for entrance exams. They need to recruit new club members because before they know it, they'll graduate and leave Azusa behind. As the series draws closer to its conclusion, the girls make a conscious effort to enjoy their final days of high school. With the season synopsis out of the way, let's look at the SDI Media Hong Kong dub of Season 2, aka the Animax dub. SDI Media Hong Kong returned to dub Season 2 of the popular slice-of-life anime k -On. This dub premiered on October 20th, 2010, alongside the original Japanese audio version, which is... Six months after the end of Season 1's broadcast on Animax. Yeah, before the American version of Season 1 even released. Hong Kong was already on Season 2 and finished airing the 24-episode season about three weeks before the American dub came out. No kidding. What's more, it debuted only six and a half months after season two began in Japan. Talk about a fast turnaround. But this quick release ties into a point I made last time we talked about this dub. To refresh everyone's memory, these dubs are made quickly and cheaply, like a factory. Hong Kong anime dub teams could find themselves working on as many as three shows a day in quick succession to have the content ready to air as fast as possible. This poses a problem for this season of K-On! because of the massive number of aspects of the script that can't be translated directly. But before we hop into the dub itself, the Hong Kong dub saw some casting changes as Candace Moore didn't return for this new season. Her roles as Sawako, Azusa, and Samugi were reassigned to other actresses. Lily Tronkale picked up the role of Sawako while still voicing Yui. Of Moore's three characters, I thought Moore fit the metalhead teacher the best, but I personally enjoy Tronkale's performance too. Tronkale as Sawako, naturally, leads into a more youthful teacher voice. This is the first time I've been assigned my own homeroom class, so I might not meet all of your expectations. Please bear with me. But Tronkale can also tap into that unhinged dark side of Sawako just as well. Death Devil doesn't play crappy cutesy music! Now, I'm going to show you how to be done! Catherine Fu received the role of Azusa while continuing to play Mio and Dewey. Remember in Season 1 when Sawako couldn't tell the difference between Mio and Azusa without glasses on? Well, I guess she'd have an even harder time since they're voiced by the same person in this season. To me, Azusa felt like a total miscast for more. She sounded too old for such a dainty young girl, and it sounded almost identical to her other characters on the cast. Fu, on the other hand, sounds miles better. To differentiate from Mio and Dewey, Fu gave Azusa a nasally voice, which sounds like an early version of the voice she'd give Maruko in Chibi Maruko-chan many years later. Uh, I'm so sorry. I know you've been busy because of the play. I really do believe that you needed to rehearse a lot to put on such a great performance today. Nah, I'm just jealous that everyone else is gonna have a good time. Man, I envy you guys. Fu had some other new responsibilities too. Jack Murphy came back to direct the new season of this hot property, but he wasn't alone this time. Catherine Fu became one of the directors for a few episodes too, and wrote some of the scripts. We've discussed Moore's characters of Sawako and Azusa being recast, but what about Samugi? Sources online say it is Lily Tronkale, but this does not sound like Tronkale. Oh, I remember bringing in this coffee set, but we never did get to use it. 
I asked Catherine Fu about this unknown actress for Mugi. Here's what Fu wrote. Ah, yes, that was someone we hired just for that one series as a trial. I don't remember her name as we didn't really work with her again. So Mugi's voice actress isn't going to be anyone I'm in contact with as it sounds like Kaon is her only project. I talked to this supposed voice of Mugi in Season 2 herself, and if Fu's comment wasn't evidence enough, Tronkale herself confirmed she was not the voice of Mugi. Her comments echoed Fu, saying the unknown actress was new to dubbing, and by that point the voice cast wasn't recording as a group in the booth, so they never directly worked together. Lastly, out of curiosity, I asked Alice Beaver, who wasn't in this dub, but I thought she might be able to help. She had no idea either after listening to a clip. Unless this actress comes forward or someone recalls who voices Mugi, this cast member will remain a mystery. Chaos Season 2 has lots of extra characters. The main four actresses can be heard throughout the supporting cast. Kaon doesn't have many male characters, but actors like Russell Waite can be heard providing their voices in this dub when they do appear. The SDI Media dub cast sounds far better than Season 1, and that makes sense seeing as most of the team already had one go-around with this group of girls. Additionally, Tronkale and Fu slip into their new lead roles with no problem. Like I said, I think Fu is better as Azusa than more. Sumugi's actress, though, has a strangely inconsistent voice. Sometimes she has perfectly fine line reads. You know, you'll feel even hotter if you keep thinking about it that way. Sometimes she doesn't. Right, Mugi, the battle is far from being over. Bring it on. Sometimes she speaks with a pseudo-British accent. Thank you for making my keyboard talk. It really inspired me. Sometimes she doesn't. I, uh, I started the whole note passing thing just now. It really has nothing to do with Mio-chan. And this leads to a performance that can change episode to episode, scene to scene, or even line to line. There is one constant to her performance. She can't seem to say Rik-chan, or I guess Rik-chan in this case. Rik-chan? 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 There is one case where she gets it right, but every other time it's <laughs> Rik-chan. It's a shame because, personally, I think her natural voice suits Mugi, but her erratic performance hampers her role in the dub. It doesn't help she wasn't in Season 1, whereas her fellow actresses were already familiar with the material, so had an overall better sound. Returning cast experience aside, there are other improvements that help fine-tune the dub, more specifically, the script. Last season, the dub suffered from inconsistencies in names, terms, and pronunciations, and this season fixes many of them. The two main changes in names are Fwafwa time being light and fluffy time instead of floating time, and Azunya now being used instead of season 1's Azumiya, although it's usually pronounced Azunian. On the topic of Hokago Tea Times Kohai, let's look at pronunciations. The dub keeps Azusa slash Azusa, still not completely consistent, but leans more towards the former than the latter. And while Season 1 flipped between different pronunciations of Ritsu and Sawako, Season 2 keeps it as Ritsu and Sawako, with very few exceptions. The cursed Tumugi pronunciation from Season 1 is no longer relevant. In Episode 1, we get Chumugi, but thankfully, that is the only weird pronunciation of Mugi's name. One thing I neglected to mention in the first Kaon video is what Yui named her guitar in this dub. In Japanese, its name is Gita. In the Season 1 dub, it's... Guitar. Creative, I know. In Season 2, though, the dub script correctly names it Gita. I would be remiss to not mention the newest addition to the Light Music Club this season, the pig-nosed turtle, Tonchan. Why do I bring him up? Because you'd think it'd be pronounced Tonchan in this dub, like the English word ton. But nope, it's Tonchan. Some things never change, such as the way the dub says the honorific Chan. It's still pronounced Chan most of the time, not Chan. The dub also continues to use Senior instead of Senpai. Kaon songs are still not dubbed, as to be expected. Not even little songs like Yui's Turtle Song, but there are two exceptions in episode 15. The Light Music Club girls try to stay determined during the school marathon and decide to sing a couple HTT classics to keep their spirits up. Season 1 episode 5 had Yui sing a small portion of Fwa Fwa time, but here's a little bit more. Every time I look at you, my heart starts thumping wildly. The swaying memories are, are like my And here is my love as a stapler. On this night, filled with worries, I wonder why. Uh -huh. I'm uh -huh. writing on paper. Oh, uh -huh. I suppose there's one more trait. I mentioned in Season 1 how the unseen occult club was called the Card Club, possibly due to censorship. In Season 2, the Occult Club shows up, and they are called the Occult Club. There is one joke about... Mm, 
unsolicited touching that was removed, but otherwise there is no censorship in this dub season. So far, everything seems like it should make for a solid dub, one that surpasses season 1, but a more experienced cast and more consistent script do not make up for many fundamental flaws in Hong Kong dubbing. Namely, K on Season 2 has loads, and loads, of puns, and cultural references, and aspects of the Japanese language such as dialects that are lost in translation. Hong Kong dubs are done quickly and cheaply on a limited team, so they don't usually have the resources to properly adapt things like puns and dialects. This can lead to confusing translations and interactions. Can I please give you a big hug? What planet are you from? That's an odd reaction to a good friend wanting to give a hug, right? Well, that's because in Japanese, Mugi suddenly started speaking in a Hakata dialect, so Ritsu replies, Where are you from? Translating Mugi's sentence as is from Japanese, yes, it means, can I have a hug? But the nuance and context are lost in the process, creating this strange interaction. In other cases, the context is there, but only viewers that know some aspects of the Japanese language will understand. In a flashback with a younger Mio and Ritsu, Ritsu suggests that Mio end sentences with DAZE! It's a typically male way to add some oomph to a sentence, like in the Japanese tagline for Pokemon, Pokemon get to the or more famously to Western anime fans, yare, yare The dub script keeps the daze like in Japanese, and even with context it just comes off as weird. Even just little jokes are lost in translation, like Mio's base. In Japanese, her base is named Eriza Base, a pun combining Elizabeth and base. SDI Media Script just calls the base Elizabeth, so the joke is lost in translation. Elizabeth, you'll be spending the night with Gita. Be nice. Stop trying to name it! It's a base, so she named it Elizabeth. Another notable instance is Ritsu's pun-based song ideas. They were translated as is in this dub. How much is much? The telephone call. The sleeping cat? At least Ro Mio is an easy pun to translate. Some translations are incorrect. In some cases, however, it's easy to see why a translation went wrong. When Yui writes one of her most iconic goofy songs, Rice as a Side Dish, the script mistranslates Gohan. No, not that Gohan. Gohan, in context, is supposed to be rice, or more specifically cooked rice, but can also be food or meals in general. Hence phrases like Asa Gohan being breakfast, literally meaning morning food or morning meal. This being said, when Yui is reciting the lyrics to her brilliant work, her lyrics are just about food in the dub. All food is really awesome. Anything is delicious. Uh, one, two, three, four, food! Again, I can see where they're coming from, especially because it's Yui we're talking about. But the more the lyrics are made available, the more obvious it becomes that she's writing about rice. Because of course she is. In fact, her song title became... Uh, Cutlet for Dinner? Well, this is made irrelevant come episode 20 when the song debuts. The song is named Rice is a Dish in this dub. That's a problem seen a few times in this dub, and is a common problem with Hong Kong anime dubs in general. Recurring jokes or callbacks to quotes from other episodes are lost in the scripting process, although this case was for the better. Even American dubs can fall prey to this, but some of these moments in Kaon are referring to something from the previous episode, not a long time ago. There is a joke in episode 1 where the gang is outside in their animal costumes advertising the Light Music Club. Atsusa asks why she is the pig. In the dub, the explanation given is because she quote, pigs out all the time in the club room. In Japanese, the joke is Azusa is the keonbuta, a combination of keonbu and buta, which means pig. In the following episode, when Yui is half asleep at the start of the episode, she says keonbuta, but the dub misses the joke and she just says light music club pig. And some jokes just don't translate at all. Oh, English! It's blinding me! We're in Japan! We don't need icky English! No, we do not! We will live only using Japanese here! Yes, we will! These late 2000s and early 2010s Hong Kong dubs would sometimes reference actual series or products for seemingly no reason. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood did this by referencing the children's book C Spot Run. K on Season 2 did this by name dropping the iPad in Episode 11 instead of just saying computer, and Gatorade in Episode 12 instead of just saying sports drink. I don't know, there's just something bizarre about it. There are other errors and oddities across the season's 24 episode run, but I think these illustrate major flaws in these kinds of dubs. When the script writers are rushed and don't have access to the original Japanese material, let alone someone that can help comprehend specific lines, they make scripts that are translated directly, losing context, 
puns, and some terminology. But that's not to say the dub didn't adapt anything, or at least try to in some spots. Like their choice to use I think therefore I am for kino mochio, a phrase which means the way one looks at things or it depends on how you look at things. So far from a one to one usage, but at least they tried. The dub has some moments of ingenuity that work though. I already brought up how the crew made the Keonbuta joke work in their own way, but there are other examples, including one in that very episode. When Yui is trying to recruit new members, she speaks in a Kansai dialect and asks for directions to the club room to strangers in the hallway. And this would not be the only time Akito Yosaku would be heard using a Kansai dialect, just saying. The dub adapts this by having Yui speak in a southern accent. Oh hey y'all, do you gals happen to know where the music room is? As one last highlight, in episode 9 when Yui starts singing Kokiri Kobushi in Japanese, the dub decides to use a more well-known folk song in English. Like a minor, 49er, and his daughter Clementine. Wait, going oh to sing Clementine? Props to the dub for this clever idea. Even with the flaws of this dub, I don't think it's a bad dub. The direction is overall competent, with a handful of episodes that sound off, and it brings that natural rapport between Tronkale, Hoffman, and Fu to life. Even the unknown actress has some highlights, and I think all the dub's best features are shown at their brightest in the last few episodes. Episode 20 is where Hokago Tea Time plays a concert during the school festival and performs the silly rice as a side dish, the classic fwa time, and the heartfelt you and I. After the concert, the girls go back to the club room and reflect on their amazing show and realize there's not much time left for the seniors. There's Christmas, then there's New Year's, but after that there's graduation. Nope, 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 I'm fine. It's just, you stick with these characters for so many episodes, you hope their energetic concerts and joyous days never end. Many shows like this end with the cast still being in high school with no real ending to it, but k is one that progresses over time, leading to its main cast graduating, hinting at it every episode, dropping reminders that the cast is growing up, time is moving forward, you know it's coming, but you just want to see them hang out and play music forever. I give massive praise to voice director Jack Murphy and the entirety of the main cast for pulling off this emotional moment so well. We won't have another high school festival, Yui. Really? Oh, that really, really stinks. I don't want to leave. I, I'm just sweating. <laughs> I can nitpick other parts of this dub, but this, this is fantastic. I think it's the highlight of the dub. Lastly, let's jump ahead to episode 24, Graduation. This episode of the Hong Kong dub isn't 100% gold, but it's still a damn good performance. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to cry in front of you guys. I wanted to send you off with a smile. The biggest flub in this episode is, going back to an earlier point, a callback quote being lost in the script writing process, but this one is more understandable. Azusa's final line after Hokago Tea Time plays Tenchini Furetayo originally is based on what Yui says in episode 1 after the band plays Subaso Kurasai, telling them they're not very good. The dub slips up here by having Azusa say something different, telling the band it's actually not a very good song. But otherwise, it is a solid dub episode and a good note to end on. After this emotional farewell in March of 2011, the show was replaced the following week by the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya Season 2, so it seemed k wasn't going to be airing again for a while. But wait, aren't there more episodes? We're not done talking about SDI Media's dub of k quite yet. Every moment rocks! In the complete series of k -On, Monday to Friday at 7 p.m., only on Animax. Episode 24 is the end of k Season 2. Technically. Just like Season 1, the last technical episode doesn't mean the last episode. k Season 1 has one extra episode and an OVA, and k Season 2 has two extra episodes and an OVA. Animax Asia started airing an encore run of k Season 1 and 2 starting on July 13th, 2011 as one last hurrah for the whole Kago Tea Time Girls. This rerun marathon, called k Special on TV schedules, was topped off with the broadcast of k 2 Extra Episodes, Episode 25 and 26, and the Blu-ray OVA, Episode 27, that never aired on TV before. And yes, all three of these were dubbed. The gap between Episodes 24 and 25 was short, but still brought one casting change. Did you think we were done talking about Moogie's voice? Think again. 
The unknown actress didn't reprise her role in these final episodes. Her new voice actress is easy to identify though, since she's been with the cast throughout both seasons. Sumugi Kotobuki in these episodes is voiced by Muriel Hoffman. How about a dark stormy night and the light music club is trapped inside the school and we begin to disappear mysteriously one by one like in the lyrics for rice is a dish. Of the three voices for Sumugi throughout Kaon's Animax run, I think Hoffman is the best. Candace Moore was fine and I already said my opinion about the unknown actress, but I think Hoffman gets everything right. It's well acted, it's appropriately pitched, and it doesn't use an inconsistent accent. Just unfortunate she only got to voice Moogie for three episodes. The scriptwriters seem to be chronologically confused regarding where these episodes land in the timeline. And to be fair, episode 24 is where the girls graduate, so it stands to reason 25 would happen afterwards. The dub says the girls already graduated, not knowing these episodes happened before episode 24. Episodes 25 and 26 of the SDI media dub are... fine. There are funky translations, the aforementioned continuity issue, and just for good measure I guess we get a Rick Chan for no reason, but otherwise, there are a fine couple episodes leading up to the finale, episode 27. This episode serves as the segue to K-On! the movie, where the girls travel to the UK. SDI Media did not dub the movie, and if they did, it would be plagued with the problems we've been discussing. This episode alone hosts some of those issues, such as Yui trying to speak in English and ending up playing charades. The script straight up keeps the no Nihongo line, now remember in part 1 I said changing the name of Hokago Tea Time to After School Tea Time would be a problem? Episode 27 is where this happens. The girls mention no matter where they go, they'll always be Hokago Tea Time instead of translating it to something like After School Tea Time. So the dub backpedals and keeps Hokago Tea Time as is. Barring any English issues, this dub episode is alright. It's a nice send off to this dub of Kaon. Fortunately, just like season 1, this Hong Kong dub is completely preserved. It's easy to find for those curious to see the dub in full. As for reception of this k dub, it's exactly like season 1. I already said I think this dub is alright, but general reception was, and still is, negative. Even way back when this first came out, it wasn't received well. The SDI media dub is at an unfair disadvantage in terms of production, as I have discussed. But also, this dub isn't readily available like the Japanese original or the US dub. You had to either catch it in broadcast or look at it by <clears throat> other means, if you know what I mean. Regardless, Chaos finale landed with no further issues in Southeast Asia. But that wasn't entirely the case in America. Yep, we're doing a part three. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Big thank yous go out to Lily Tronkale, the SDI media voice of Yui Hirasawa, Catherine Fu, the SDI media voice of Mio Akiyama, Muriel Hoffman, the SDI media voice of Ritsu Tainaka, and Alice Beaver, who's not in this dub but helped in trying to pinpoint the girl that voices Mugi. Sorry to do another part to this, but I had too much to talk about. Next time we're going to talk about the American dub of season 2 as well as the dub of the movie. Until then, let me know in the comments, what did you think of this dub of k season 2? How did you first discover k -On? What else should I cover in this series? I am always listening to your suggestions. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon and Twitch. Supporters on either platform got to see this video early, so if you'd like to support what I do, gain access to my exclusive Discord server, and have your name on screen here, please consider supporting. And special thank yous go to everyone that donated during Extra Life 2022. Andrew Bergman, Cybershroom, Janet L, Joe D, Matt, Project Scion, Straw Hat Ryan, and everyone else that donated during the event. Until next time, take care.